It's one of the most controversial questions of the ages. Who is Jesus? Is he a good man? Is he a prophet? Or is he, as Christians believe, actually divine? Well, meet Mike Lacona. He's founder of Risen Jesus, a Christian organization in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and co-author of The Case for the Resurrection of Jesus. And here's Shabir Ali. He's founder of the Islamic Information Center in Toronto, Canada, yeah. and author of the book, Is Jesus God? The Bible Says No. Now, Shabir, as a Muslim, how is it that you view Jesus? Who is he? You don't consider him to be divine. Uh, I consider him to be the prophet and messiah of God, born of the Virgin Mary. He performed many miraculous deeds. God raised him miraculously, and we expect his uh, supernatural return. Uh, but he is not the son of God. He is not uh, divine in any way. And no. Okay, Michael, now you're making the affirmative claim that Jesus is indeed divine. Now, that's an easy claim to make, but what evidence do you have that he believed that and that he proved it to be true? Hmm. Well, Lee, scholars have established that within ju uh, just a few years of Jesus' crucifixion, the early Christians were regarding him as divine, despite the fact that he had been crucified. Now, what on earth would have led them to this type of a belief, a belief that was so strong that they were willing to die for it? We have historical evidence that Jesus claimed divinity and rose from the dead. When someone claims to be divine and rises from the dead, we should believe him. Shabir, how do you respond to that? Well, I feel that uh, Mike is putting words into the lips of Jesus, uh, saying that Jesus must have claimed that because the disciples believed it. Uh, to, uh, to address the first uh, point, there is nothing recorded in the gospel showing that Jesus clearly affirmed his own divinity. And second, there is evidence in the Acts of the Apostles and elsewhere in the New Testament that the original followers of Jesus did not actually take him to be God. Okay, Michael, those are important assertions mm -hmm. there. Uh, did Jesus believe he was God, and how do we know? It would seem that he hadn't Good read question. the New Testament if he's going to make the statement that the New Testament nowhere has any place where Jesus claimed to be divine. It's filled with those kind of claims. But I think what he's probably referring to are statements that can be historically verified or for which we have good evidence. For example? Well, for example, you've got Mark chapter 14, verses 61 through 64, where Jesus is before the uh, Jewish leaders and the high priest says, are you the, the Messiah, the Son of God? And Jesus says, yes, and you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. That's something in the Old Testament that only God does, and seated at the right hand of power. In other words, he's claiming to be a co-occupant of God's throne. Shabir, has he convinced you? <laughs> no, I don't think so, because he's referring to the trial uh, of Jesus before the Jewish Sanhedrin. Right. And this is reported variously in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, and uh, in, in Matthew and Luke's uh, versions, we have it that Jesus uh, did not actually affirm the title. He said, you are the ones claiming that I am, it, it, in essence. And to say that Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven proves that he is uh, God himself, that would be to say that God could not do this for one of his creatures. So I do not think um, that arguing from silence will make Jesus... Jesus God. It is clear that to affirm Jesus as God involves uh, a, a, a logical self-contradiction. It involves a contradiction with the divine scriptures, and it involves also a, a religious problem. Now, I want to return you to that passage uh, from the trial before the Jewish Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin asks him, uh, are you the Messiah, son of the living God? Now, and, and it says that Jesus said, I am, in Mark's gospel. But in Matthew and Luke's account of the same episode, Jesus says, you say that I am. Hmm. And and unless you can first establish the actual words of Jesus, you cannot build yeah, uh, say, a reasonable uh, commentary am, on that. that now, am. it's okay, better Shabir, to say what does he say right after that you say that I am? He says, you will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven and seated at the right hand of power. I mean, so these you are, have to decide, are you, saying, are you saying that his divinity is based on his saying uh, I am or his saying that he's coming on the clouds of heaven? First of coming all, there's nothing clear. Coming on the clouds of heaven, seated at the right hand of okay. power. Well, here I'm saying that God can do that for any of his creatures, and that would not make the creature himself God. If God calls up a creature with Jesus him to his throne... Jesus is claiming to be a co-occupant of God's throne. Hmm. Okay, good uh, debate going on here. I believe Jesus is God. Oh. No, I don't believe Jesus is God. I believe there's a separate... Um, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I absolutely hmm. believe that Jesus is God. Hmm. I don't think Jesus ever claimed to be God. I think probably he was uh, sort of like a pop star. Pop star. Pop star Jesus. God Jesus. Son of God Jesus. We're back talking about Jesus. So is he divine about as Jesus. Christianity Man. claims or just a prophet of God as Islam claims? 
Now, Shabir, Mike's been referring to New Testament records that are much closer to the actual life of Jesus than the Quran, which Muhammad recorded some 600 years later. So why should we consider the Quran to be a better historical record when it's so much later than these New Testament accounts? Okay. Well, the Quran does not claim to be a better historical record. The Quran claims to reaffirm that teaching which is there in the earlier historical record, namely the Gospels themselves. And it calls upon the people of the Gospel to judge by what God has revealed in the Gospels. And when we look at the Good Gospels, response. we see that Jesus throughout was referring to himself as the Son of Man, which means a human being, that he had human limitations, he did not know everything. He said of that day and hour, no man knows, not even the Son, but the Father only. Uh, he said, I can of myself do nothing. Uh, I do only as the Father has commanded me. Throughout, Jesus is deferring to God, and in fact, he falls in his face and he prays to God. All of these are human attributes which the Quran affirms as clear evidence that Jesus was a prophet, he was a human servant and messenger of God. Okay, Michael, that's, uh, those are some very good points that the Quran talks about, refers to in the Gospels. How do you look at the matter? Well, it's how Christians have looked at it from the very beginning, that Jesus had two natures, a divine nature and a human nature. So simply, he had these limitations in his human nature while not in his divine nature. Uh, you, you must have it such that Jesus is completely God and completely man at the same time. That is like saying that something is a square circle. You cannot be both, because to be human means to have limitations. To be divine means to have none. You cannot be limited and unlimited at the same time, unless you're schizophrenic, in which you have two different personalities here. Okay, when Michael, Jesus is Jesus defers, schizophrenic? Let's, let's answer that question. <laughs> well, no, I mean, he was completely human in his human nature, and he was completely divine in his divine nature, and this is pretty clear throughout the New Testament. But when we come to the Quran, what we find is a Jesus that um, is quite different than what we find in the New Testament. It's a Jesus who comes out of the womb speaking and preaching. It's a Jesus uh, who's part of a trinity that includes the Father, Son, and Mary. It's a Jesus that we find in the Gnostic Gospel I think you have, misunderstood the, you have misunderstood the Quran here because the Quran does not say that Jesus is part of a trinity uh, that involves uh, God, Mary, and Jesus. The Quran refutes well, the belief of those... Well, that might be a those, certain interpretation of it, but... The, the Quran refutes the belief of those who uh, claim this. Uh, but uh, what the Quran shows clearly is that Jesus cannot be part of a trinity because no such thing as a trinity exists. That God is one throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament. The word Trinity does not exist in the Bible. This is a later idea. Well, that neither does theology, at. Shabir, but we both believe theology is real. I mean, listen, look, what we have of the Quran is this. We've got a book that's written 600 years after Jesus, fifth hand source at best. Um, it's written in a different country, a different culture, in a different language in which Jesus lived Yeah, Mike, lived but you're missing the point, because one doesn't need the Quran to affirm that Jesus is a human being and a prophet. The Quran, by affirming that Jesus is a prophet, is not saying something new than what Christians already believe, because the Gospels show that he's a prophet, and Christians, despite believing that Jesus is God, also affirm that he's a prophet. So on that, Christians will agree with the Quran. Right. Shabir, Shabir, let me ask this then. Where, where did this idea that Jesus is God come from? Well, the idea that Jesus is God is something that evolved over time. We can see in the pages of the New Testament itself and Acts of the Apostles that people very easily in the Greco-Roman world took people for gods. Shabir, I want to tell you, I've written a 300-page book on the evidence that convinced me as an atheist uh, that Jesus did claim to be the Son of God, and he proved it by returning from the dead. And so my last question to you, and we just have a moment, is what would you say to Christians like me who are absolutely convinced by the evidence that the evidence supports those claims? I would say that you have to start by looking at the logical problems with claiming that Jesus is God and then interpret the scriptures in a reasonable way that does not uh, give rise to these logical problems. Okay. To say that he was God and man at the same time is logically self-contradictory. To say he is one of a trinity is also to introduce yeah. another logical contradiction. I've heard you talk about religion so much and I'll speak of the Bible because that's what I'm aware of. You say, you talk of Jesus as religious leader. But as far as I'm concerned, Jesus did not come to introduce any religion. Neither is he a religion, religious leader. What Jesus introduced in this world was the kingdom of God. The second question, maybe you can elaborate, uh, which religion is God? Because as far as I do research, I've come to understand that Jesus, who is my Lord and my Savior, n he did not introduce any of those. He introduced the government of heaven. In other words, he wanted to colonize the world like, with heavenly power. There's a lot of controversies. 
The other question is... Sister, please pose one question at a time. I already posted two questions. After the answer, you can ask the next question. Okay. One question at a time. Yeah. The sister asked two questions, and I believe the sister is a Christian. She said that I said Jesus was a religious leader. I never said that. I never ever said Jesus, peace be upon him, was a religious leader. I said he was a messenger of God. There's a world of a difference between messenger of God and religious leader. A messenger of God is far superior. We have many religious leaders in the world today. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of God. And you said in your question that he is your Lord yeah, and your Savior. First, let me tell you, sister. In his full capacity. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was one of the mightiest messengers of Almighty God. We believe that he was the Messiah, which is translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern day Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Muslims and the Christians, we are going together. But one may ask, then where is the parting of faith? The parting of faith is that most of the Christians believe, including yourself, yeah. that we come to know from a question, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claimed divinity. And most of the Christians believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is God. I, I Let me remind you, sister. I am I'm the father of one. Of religion. I've read the Bible. There is not a single uh. unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. If, sister, you can point out a single unequivocal statement from anywhere in the Bible, a single unambiguous statement from anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace Don't be upon him, himself him. says that I am God or where he says worship me, I, Zakir Naik, am ready to accept Christianity today. I have heard you start saying that. I am not times. speaking on behalf of the other Muslims. I am ready to put my head on the guillotine. There uh, is not a single unequivocal statement. Hear my question clearly. Hear my challenge clearly, sister. There is not a single unambiguous statement. Not a single unequivocal statement where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself flesh. says that I am God or where he says worship me. Yes, sister. I have an answer to that, sir. Yes, in the book of John, the Bible says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And the Word became flesh. What I want you to wait, know wait, is wait, that... Wait, 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 sister. That does not fulfill my challenge at all. You, you name the book, I will give you reference. You are quoting from the Gospel of John, me? chapter number 1, verse number 1. Wait, let him and talk. the Word became flesh is verse number 11, 12, 13. You are quoting only the book. I am giving you chapter number, verse number. I answer but, me. Wait, wait, the I'm, word became God. But what does that pulled, say? Sister, were these the words spoken by Jesus, peace be upon him? And the answer is no. What is my challenge? Not a single unequivocal statement. Not a single unambiguous statement. From anywhere in the Christian? Bible, where Jesus He's Christ, so peace slick, be upon yeah? him, himself says. Himself says means that should be in red letter. There is something called as red letter Bible. If you are a Christian, you may be aware of it. Red letter means Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself said. Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 1 to 13 is not in red. I'll answer it. Wait here, let answer it. First of all, you have not fulfilled my challenge. It should be Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself says. These are not the words of Jesus. It is the word of a Jew by the name of Philo. Yeah, she's a little Correct? Bit. It's the word of a Jew by the name of Philo. And God. never ever did he claim divinity for this. God. Yet, I will help God. you. What does it say? In the big, anyway, your quotation wasn't correct. I will give you the verbatim quotation. Gospel of John, chapter number one, verse number one says, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. And later on it says the word became flesh. If you agree that talk. the word is God, and if you yeah. change word is to God, in the beginning was word becomes in the beginning was God, and God was with God, do you mean to say there were two gods? 
Then you talk. No, it's exactly. the word Let of God, complete. sir. Exactly. Let me complete. You pose the question. You pose the question, I'm taking You don't a allow people to give answers. Exactly. You, ask, you pose the question, I'm giving the answer. After I finish the answer, you can speak. You can't interrupt. Did I interrupt you when you were speaking? Did I interrupt? Yes or no? Now no. when I'm giving the answer, why are you interrupting? Let me finish the answer, then you can answer. Point number one, you didn't fulfill my challenge. It is not the word of Jesus. Your whole argument goes out. Yet I'm answering. You did not tell, you should say, sorry, Dr. Zakir, it is not the word of Jesus. Did you say that? No. You are not honest. Tell to the, tell to the audience, these are not the words of Jesus, peace be upon him. Am I right or no? You don't know. See, you are quoting and you don't know. I am a student of comparative religion. These words are not spoken by Jesus, peace be upon him. Yet I am answering. If you say the word is God, and if you substitute words with God, it means in the beginning was the word becomes in the beginning was God. God was with God. Was there two gods? And the answer is no. I'll give you a third answer. If you read the original manuscript, the first time the word God is used, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. It is hothios. Hothios in Greek and Aramaic means the God. The second time the God is used, it is tonthios. Hothios means the God, Almighty God. Tonthios means godly person. But unfortunately, in the translation, they are taking you for a ride. You go to the original manuscript of Gospel of John, chapter number one, verse number one. The first time the word God is used, it is hothios, meaning the God. Second time it is used, it tonthios, means the godly person. So it reads, in the beginning Bro. was the word, the word was with God, the God. And the word was a godly person, meaning a messenger of God. Mister, do you understand? No. This is called, you don't understand English. I'm you tell me what English, I said is wrong. I'm quoting your scholars. I am quoting your, you pick up any Bible, of red letter Bible. These words are not in that point number one. You go to the Greek and Arabic. Do you know Greek, sister? Do you know Greek and Aramaic? Was the Bible revealed in English? Was the Bible revealed in English, sister? Yeah, um, it was Greek. Greek and Aramaic. So the original word is hothios. Do you know what is the meaning of hothios? Go home and Google. Hothios, maybe I'm pulling a fast one. All right, one. sir. All wait, right, wait, sir. wait, wait. Hothios it means the God. Tonthios means a God, godly person. That means even if I agree, it says Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of God. Do you believe in that? No. He's, bi he's bigger than messenger. He's not just a messenger. It's an sister, insult to sister, call my Lord sister, a messenger. Sister, 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 I asked We you will what, do something to prove something, sir. What first says that what you quoted is wrong. You agree it is wrong, then we go to the next question. I don't agree. That means I'm what you said is this. it's not word of Jesus. That means you're fooling the people, right or wrong? Did you... you you thought I did not know, correct? No, I'm, I'm not here to demonstrate knowledge, yeah, sir. I'm it is not the question of knowledge. It is the question of Bible. You believe Bible is the word of God, correct? Yes, I do. I don't believe it is the word of God. Even though you believe the Bible is the word of God, I know Bible more than you, right? There is one thing to know the Bible. There is another thing to have the revelation of the Bible. Because you know, even when Jesus came, the people who did not understand who he was were religious leaders. They missed big time. Sister, they did not know who he was because sister, he was hidden. And the work of the New one Testament. place in the Bible where the un un unambiguous statement, unequivocal statement, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says, I am God, or where he says, worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity. Simple challenge. And you can't show one verse from this big Can I ask of you a question, sir? Can you separate yourself from your word? Sorry? Can you separate Dr. Zaka and Naik from his word? Can you separate Dr. Can you separate Zaka? yourself from your word? But what difference does it make whether I can or whether I cannot? You see? You don't get it. Jesus is the word of God made flesh. But well, religious mind is too big for five senses. Jesus is the word of God and himself he is God. The Bible every, said he gave him the name that is above every other name, every, which is the word of God. Every messenger 
get the word of god moses was the word of god jesus was the word of god abraham was the word of god prophet muhammad is the word of god Question. so what is the problem Which of every the messenger, messenger did what jesus at this time did? is the word of god what is so different about jesus peace be upon him you the cannot difference. point out a single statement from your bible where jesus said i'm god of he says worship me I have, and now I you're have putting an answer for that sir since the the beginning of the word of, of the bible till the time of jesus tell me any of the messenger you call who was capable to cast out devils to heal the sick why because in the beginning it was only god who had power to deal with the devil from the fall of the from of man in the garden of eden but these things were hidden for salvation of men if a person takes out devils from a person does he become god today there are many people who do rukya yes, and they take I out devils the same they don't become I've god translated into the kingdom of god see son today sister there are many human beings even in qatar mm. you have who can do rukya and can take out devils from the human being because that does not make them god does they, it make they, them god they got that power from jesus i cast out devils myself Oh, in so the you're... name of Jesus. Oh, so you also become God now? No, I, I have been translated because of my faith in Jesus. The I Bible agree says, with you. You, listen. you, Jesus Christ, peace be upon you. If you read the Bible in the Gospel, no. when He gives life to the dead Lazarus, no, He prays to Almighty God. Every miracle Jesus Christ, peace oh. be upon Him, did He did in the name of God. He didn't do on his own. If Same you would give me time, says. I will explain to all this congregation Sorry, what is all about Jesus. Sorry, we don't have the time. You can hire the hall and tomorrow give a lecture. This is a question and the time. You did not answer time. me. When we read superficially, we come to know that the Bible and the Quran are the same. But if we do a research or we analyze it, we come to know that the difference of chalk and chiefs. When we read the Bible, it's mentioned in the first book of the Bible, book of Genesis, chapter number one. That Almighty God, He created the heavens and the earth in six days. And these six days are 24 hours days. Mention the Bible. The Quran too speaks about the creation of the universe and says, Almighty God has created the heavens and the earth in six ayams. Ayam is plural of yom. One of the meaning of yom is a 24 hour day, but the other Arabic meaning of yom is a long period, an epoch. Today, scientists, they say that our universe was created in billions of years. So to say it was created in 624 days is wrong. But the scientists have got no objection with the Quran when the Quran says the heavens and the earth were created in six ayams. That is, six long periods without defining them to be strict 24 hours. Furthermore, it's mentioned in the Bible, in the first book, book of Genesis, chapter number one, verse number three to five, that Almighty God, He created the day and the night on the first day. And He created the light on the first day. It later says in Genesis chapter number one, verse 14 to 19, the source of light, that is, the stars and the sun, they were created on the fourth day. Imagine the effect is created on the first day, and the cause of the effect on the fourth day. The sun was created, and the stars on the fourth day, and the light from the sun and the star was created on the first day. It's illogical. How can the effect come before the source? Quran 2 speaks about the creation of the heavens and the earth, but does not give this unscientific sequence. <laughs> Furthermore, mentioned in the first book of the Bible, Interesting. book of Genesis, chapter number 1, verse number 9 to 13, that the earth was created on the third day, and Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 14 to 19, that the sun and the moon was created on the fourth day. We know from science that the earth and the moon are the part of the parent body that is the sun. So to say that the earth was created before the parent body, the sun, is unscientific. Uh... The Quran too speaks about creation of the heavens, the sun, the moon, and the earth. But it says it was created simultaneously. Imagine Prophet Muhammad copied from the Bible and he changed the sequence. He says, no, both were created together. Bible further says in the book of Genesis, chapter number one, verse number nine to thirteen, that Almighty God created the vegetables and the vegetations on the third day. And Genesis chapter number one, 
verse 14 to 19, he created the sun on the fourth day. Scientifically, it's not possible that the vegetation can survive without sunlight. <laughs> it's totally unscientific. Furthermore, the Bible says in Genesis chapter number 1, verse number 16, that Almighty God created two great lights. The greater light, the sun, to rule the day, and, and the, the lesser, lesser light, light, the moon, to rule the night. To rule the night. Right. So the Bible says the light of the sun as well as the light of the moon is its own light. The Bible says the light of the moon has its own light. But the Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 61, the light of the moon is not its own light, it's a reflected light. So imagine the prophet copied from the Bible and he made corrections. Not the own light, it is a reflected light. It's not humanly possible. Only one who has this knowledge is Almighty God. There are several examples, we can give a talk only on this. And I had a debate with Dr. William Campbell on the topic, the Quran and the Bible in the light of science. And there, I've mentioned many unscientific points mentioned in the Bible. Time does not permit me to go into details. The various unscientific things mentioned in the Bible, which is not mentioned in the Quran. For example, according to the Bible, Adam, peace be upon him. He came into existence about 5,800 years before. Science tells us that the human beings came into existence millions of years before. The Quran too speaks about Adam and Salam, but does not give a date. The Bible says in Genesis, chapter number 6, 7, as well as 8, about Noah and the flood. And it says that the full world was submerged underwater. At the time of Noah, that is approximately 21st, 22nd century BC. Quran too speaks about Noah as but it does not give it a date. It even speaks about the flood, but it says it was a localized flood, only it flooded the Ummah, the people of Nuh Salam, not the full world. Today, archaeological evidence shows us that the 11th dynasty of Egypt, as well as the third dynasty of Babylon, they existed without interruption since the 21st, 22nd century BC. So archaeological evidence says that what is mentioned in the Bible is totally wrong. There are various examples, we can give hundreds, time does not permit. So surely, this Quran has not been copied from the Bible. Neither it has been forged. As mentioned in the Quran in Surah Sajda, chapter number 32, verse number 1 and 2, it says that, do they say he forged it? Nay, it is a truth from the Lord. So that he may give admonition to the people to whom no warner has come in the past. So surely, we can undoubtedly say that neither Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon the author of the Quran, neither did he copy or plagiarize or learn it from any other source. Uh, my name is Lee, I'm a student. My question is that earlier you mentioned that Jesus is also a Muslim because he submits to the will of God. Um, and this is regardless of the fact that he drank alcohol, he didn't pray five times a day. You know, he, he, all he, the only action he did was submit to the will of God. So. Given that, that thinking, that logic, wouldn't that mean that any person of the book, Christian or Jew, is in fact a Muslim, as long as they agree to mis submit to the will of God? Whether if I understood your question correctly, you said any person, whether Christian or Jew, etc., who submits the will to God is a Muslim. Yeah, as you said about, about Jesus, you said Jesus is a Muslim right. for that reason. But whether, I do agree with you, anyone who submits the will to God in Arabic, you call him a Muslim. But you should first know what has God commanded us. If you think something else, if you read a scripture which is not the word of God and start thinking or submitting a will to God by following a scripture which is not the word of God, then you are not a true Muslim. So first you have to identify what has God commanded us. And if you do a comparative mm -hmm. study of all the scriptures of the various world religions, you will find out if you use the test of science, logic, etc. The only scripture that passes the test is the last and final testament. If there's something like Old Testament and New Testament, the Quran is the last testament. So, if you want to truly submit your will to God, first you have to find out who is this true God, what has He commanded us, and after that you have to submit your will. 
So therefore, when I say a true Muslim is a person who follows the commandments of Almighty God. Now Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of God. He directly got revelation from God. So surely he followed the will of Almighty God. So today also, if a Christian, supposedly, what the talk is based on, that at least let us agree to follow what is common in your scripture and my scripture. Suppose you will say Bible is the word of God, I am saying Quran is the word of God. So let us agree to follow what is common. What is different, keep it aside. So your Bible says believe in one God. So if you believe in Trinity, you are going against the Bible. The word Trinity does not exist in the Bible. But it's in the Quran. Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4, 171, Wala taqulu salasa, don't say Trinity. So if you believe in Trinity, you are going against the Bible. For the Bible says that, that you should not do idol worship. Bible says you have to believe in the last and final messenger. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now, for he when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hear, shall he speak. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. So if you are a true follower of the Bible, you have to follow in the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That means you have to follow the Quran. And the sayings of the Prophet. So if you follow the Quran and the saying of the Prophet, you become a Muslim. So my talk is based on let us agree to follow what is common. Differences, as I told earlier, I can give a talk on hundreds of contradictions in the Bible, which I don't intend doing. There was a person who wrote a book in USA, Dr. William Campbell, that there are 30 scientific reasons in the Quran. I went to Chicago and had a debate. And I clarified all his misconception. And when I pointed out 38 scientific errors in the Bible, he could not reply to any. So I cannot attribute these errors to Almighty God. So first I have to identify which is the book of God and then follow it. So even if you agree for sake of argument that Bible is the word of God, even then you have to follow the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So let us agree what is common in both the scriptures and let us agree at least implement on that today and come to common terms. Hope that answers the question. You see, one day, I was invited to a Christian school to speak, and it was a girl's school. All girls' school, so okay. So I went to speak to them, and the first question they told me is, why do you have a beard? Why do you have a beard? So I said, what do you mean? They said, no, these are Talibans. Talibans. Hmm. So Allah put it in my mind. This was a pure Christian school. You know, they had uh, idols that they have, little pictures and portraits and so on. I said, you know, to be very honest with you, we follow the prophets. And you know, I don't want to use the prophet Muhammad's example because you don't believe in him. We are talking now to Christians. But I want to tell you, when I walk in the streets of Harare, Harare is the capital of Zimbabwe, where I come from. Yeah, Zimbabwe. When I walk in the streets of Harare, the small boys... They say, Jesu. You know what is Jesu? Jesus. Says, there is mm -hmm. Jesus walking. Mm -hmm. But when they see your priest, they don't say that. Mm -hmm. Are you following what I yeah. say? When they see your priest, they don't say, there is Jesus walking. I say, but why? The reason is, we follow Jesus as well. I did not see Jesus without a beard. Anyway, I saw him with robe. And you drew the picture. I don't even believe that that is the proper picture because we are not allowed to make those pictures. But you drew the picture. According to your picture, I, am, I have got a beard. I look closer to him than any one of you. <laughs> so they were quiet. So one other girl thought she was clever. So she said, but what about your women? Why are they also covered? You cover them. You know, this question comes up all the time. So I said, because we follow the mother Mary. Finished. <laughs> closed. <laughs> Topic closed. Topic closed. Our women are closer dressed to what Christianity teaches than the Christians themselves. We are purer in Christianity than the Christians themselves. Because look at the dress code, look at the morals, look at the conducts, look at how strictly we follow the Ten Commandments, look at how we would like to you know, oh my stop God, certain things from happening. thumbnail from so one of my videos. And every little while they find it creeping in. The church sometimes will allow homosexuality, they will allow, it changes. They change it in order to get more people to follow. With us, even if no one is following, the deen will remain. And still there will be people who will follow.